Hi everyone, I'm Christina and today we have quite a few things to talk about and we're going to start by talking about the storm that is headed in the general Houston area direction, general Texas, Louisiana area. Okay, uh, we ended up that we're definitely not getting a hurricane. Okay, and you guys can really pray because not getting a hurricane isn't that amazing that is so awesome and they're not sure if it's going to be a depression or not but they are sure that we are going to have rain and so am i um one of the things that i really wanted to mention is that the driving in houston is wrong on a good day we get a little bit of rain everybody goes crazy and starts freaking so when we see bad weather we not only see those accidents and those flashing lights everywhere, but we see cars floating, you know, in the lower lying areas because they may say we're getting two to four inches of rain, but because we have like a lot of bowl like situations going on across our geography, you know, some places get more rain than others. So you have to know your area. All right. Now, what I really find interesting about the storm is like when it's coming in, it's going to be all over the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean at the same time with a tail that goes out to Africa across the Atlantic and the head of it goes north into the United States just branching off towards like the Great Lakes. It's a huge huge storm but Boston and Florida according to their news reports is supposed to be absolutely beautiful on Father's Day so congratulations to all of you okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to an article that was in the Houston press on June 13th which would have been just two days ago time flies right it says dear Houston about the tropical weather coming this weekend dot 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 that's the title we mentioned it in our weekly weather update but thought it deserved a little more discussion here given some of the more recently updated forecasts no need to bog down in a bunch of technical weather nerdery. Hey, hey. Let's instead focus on what is forecast and is what is likely to happen between now and next Tuesday by answering a few questions. The National Hurricane Center is monitoring a tropical wave that is crossing the Yucatan Peninsula or is forecast to do so and moving into the Gulf of Mexico. This wave has been forecast on numerous computer models since late last week. The most dire predictions last week showed a hurricane hitting the upper Texas coast while most others showed little to no development of any system at all. Models have now come into slightly better agreement that we'll probably get some kind of tropical disturbance between Mexico and Louisiana, but it isn't likely to be an organized system. So no hurricane? No. But it could be a hurricane. Probably not. And where will whatever it is hit? In, in the case of a broadly disorganized system as this, it really doesn't matter where the center of circulation makes landfall. In fact, they may have a hard time finding the center of circulation if it remains disorganized. But because it is such a big mess, it will likely spread rainfall across a very wide area. So, will it be enough to cause flooding? Yes, to flash flooding, okay? Um, we might not be, it says we might not be seeing what we were talking about with Hurricane Harvey or Tropical Storm Allison or the uh, tax day floods, but they are talking about, you know, messy weather, okay? So, oh, and they also mentioned that tides also may be high in places, which is what I was seeing, you know, it's going to kind of come and rhythms against different parts of the coast as far as far as Texas and Louisiana it's, but yeah I saw higher tides myself and it says when will it hit it says rainfall could begin as early as Friday which happens to be today and it is it just seems like it's a little bit cooler today though and then it ends by saying something positive saying this that we actually do need the rain so we need this widespread soaking rainfall we're gonna go with that but just be careful all right please be careful it's not gonna be pretty it is going to be messy 
okay? And that might not be huge news to everyone else, but it can actually mean lives for us, all right? So having said all that, we're going to go visit the two quakes that stood out for me in the last 24 hours, and one of them is in New Mexico again. It's uh, Cuba, New Mexico, or Cuba. I don't know how they prefer to pronounce that. But it's a 3.0, and within the last seven days, I'm pretty sure it's the last seven days, we've had two other earthquakes in New Mexico that was closer to a sleeping volcano, right? And then today we get another uh, earthquake in Texas, but it's a little further north towards the Panhandle in Snyder, Texas. It was a 2.5. So, um, in other interesting news in America, we were also talking about how I was seeing an uptick in Washington, and there just happens to be this little uh, hill in Rattlesnake Ridge, okay? Now, Rattlesnake Ridge has been, has like this crack that they've been reporting on since about January that was cracking at the top of this hill. And at the below it is this road, okay? So they're sure that, you know, with the rate that it was moving that we're looking at a landslide. Well, now this rift has become super, super big. I mean, it's, it's, here's some pictures. Okay, and then speaking of rifts of a different kind. We're going to talk about what's going on with Israel, Trump, and Palestinians in this peace deal, right? Now, what I'm gathering is not only are they looking to unveil it at some point soon, as they are always saying, it's always going to be soon that they're going to unveil this, this peace plan. Um, but there's an interesting twist to it, all right? And this was an article that was published on June 11th of this year, not very long ago, what, four days ago? It's called Report Netanyahu, White House Working to Drive Wedge Between Palestinians and the Gulf States. And they're, there's two Gulf states. There's here in the Gulf of Mexico, and then there's you know, the Arabian, you know, kind of area over there, the Middle Eastern area, they have Gulf states also. And so that's, and that's for people who don't know. So for everybody who did, I'm not insulting your intelligence, but not everybody knows. So when they say they're driving a wedge between the Palestinians and the Gulf states, what they're trying to do is break down the support system for the Palestinians that they had in the past. And what I'm really gathering from this article is that in the past the Palestinians have been completely unwilling to agree to things in the best of terms and that there is a shortness of patience that has grown not just with the US administration but surrounding countries um, of the Israel-Palestine conflict. And so I think that Trump is uh, jumping on that advantage and what he's basically doing, I think even when he uh, declared Jerusalem the capital, I mean, yes, it was a law and yes, it made sense, but it was the beginning of, if you're not going to take this deal, then we're going to start taking things off the table. Okay, we're not going to give you more. We're going to start giving you less. You're going to start losing Okay, so you better get back to this table because you're, you can either win big or lose big. It's going to be up to you. Netanyahu, according to the report, expects the Palestinians to reject Trump's plan, thus creating an opening for the Gulf states to support it and distance themselves from the Palestinian leadership while inching closer towards Israel, with whom they share a common view of Iran as the main threat in the region so i think that's really the tactic they're using that they're actually have you ever noticed that 
when you're having a hard time with a situation with another person that at some point you use the behavior that you expect out of them against them um, as a final note i wanted to also comment about a question that a viewer had on the last video i made last time i made one and someone was asking if we had noticed any black shells on the coast and i asked my native people on the coast and nobody had seen any black shells but everybody was really super shocked to get the question in general so um i just wanted to ask anybody on the coast if anyone is seeing um, an odd anomaly of black shells all right and um, get back with me on that please so um otherwise i want you to enjoy your weekend stay safe and I'll talk to you soon, okay? God bless you all. Bye.